This is the Insight is Capital podcast. Tom O'Gorman is Senior Vice President, Director, and Portfolio Manager of Fixed Income at Franklin Bissett Investment Management. The views expressed in this podcast are those of Tom O'Gorman and Franklin Bissett Investment Management. In your outlook, Tom, you say, given the economic drag from the 2017 interest rate hikes, and then, of course, we've had a couple, we've had another rate hike uh, this week, as well as the lagged effect of a stronger Canadian dollar and below target inflation rates, we do not expect a sharp tightening cycle. Uh, that was the opening to your outlook. Has your outlook changed? No, it, it hasn't changed. And in fact, I think the market, at least some parts of the market and some parts of the economic community are are coming to that conclusion, especially after the most recent comments from Governor Polos where he wouldn't even really provide any clarity on future rate increases. I mean, the one thing I think that's really important to understand with regards to Canada is that it was natural to have a strong economic bounce back when you had such a contraction from the combination of the energy crisis, the Fort McMurray fires, the global impact of Brexit, and this is all going back to the first half of 2016, you would expect a year forward, you know, as you have a snapback, growth would snap back and and rates would move higher, but now the comps, when I mean comps, it's the comparison for growth coming into 2018 is against those really stronger numbers from 2017, and it's going to be a lot harder. So we expect a material slowdown uh, in, the, in the Canadian economy. And you just have to look at the imbalances. I mean, the Bank of Canada forever has been trying to get a handoff or a transfer of strength from the uh, from all things consumer debt driven housing driven to more export and capital investment driven and that really hasn't happened so obviously a stronger Canadian dollar isn't going to aid that but I would just go back to the premise of what the Bank of Canada's single mandate is as a central bank. And, you know, the Fed has two. The Bank of Canada has one, and it's price stability. And it's hard to argue in this environment that inflation is is sort of what's driving them to increase interest rates. They will tell you that's what it is. you know, but but they have a range of one to three percent on on inflation, and we've mostly been below two, or even at times below one, and and their actions haven't coincided. You know, their tightening doesn't coincide with increasing inflation, and their loosening didn't uh, coincide uh, with weak inflation. You know, back in 2015. So, you know, I think what they're doing is they're really. Uh, addressing other issues. So, you know, the the net effect of that is we still expect pretty weak growth. We don't expect Canadian interest rates to really move that much higher. And the tightening cycle, I mean, it's possible. I mean, I I can't say with absolute certainty when you make these predictions, but it's possible they're done. I mean, that this is is, as much as they're going to get. They certainly, if you believe the currency matters to an open economy like Canada, you can't have the currency going up the the, the way it has. Uh, so you certainly can make the case they're not going to keep pace with the Fed. And, you know, the U.S. economy has some unique characteristics around it regarding the tax cuts and things that are certainly positive for growth there, but they're not necessarily one for one going to carry over to Canada. So, you know, maybe one more hike um, and then and then we'll see. Uh, but as interest rates move higher and these regulations start to take hold, you're going to see an effect on the uh, – I would expect to see some effect of slowing down housing and, and whatnot. So you certainly uh, wouldn't expect growth to be super strong. And even the Bank of Canada has a pretty – blase forecast. I think for 2018 in the most recent NPR, they were at 2.3 for this year and 1.8 for 2019. And I'm talking about real GDP. So not likely to to, to, to be too much of a, a you know, problematic uh, tightening cycle. I, I, you know, if they were to go much faster than that or go faster than the Fed, like the market had been sort of implying a few weeks ago, which we think is crazy, 
uh, I think that's problematic. It's problematic both for housing and what it does to rates, and it's problematic on the currency side. So I think they'll be very cautious. Yeah, so you're still this – is, this is where you maintain that Canada's economic growth has been largely out of sync with global activity over the last three years, that, that despite the blistering pace in the first half of 2017, the, the slower growth that characterized the latter half of the year is a more accurate reflection of Canada's yes. economic fundamentals. Just, just look at it on a, on a longer-term basis. And, and, and you can see, like, look at year over year or take two years combined. I mean, you had no growth almost for two years, 2015 and 16. So a year of, say, this year comes in at three, you know, what's the average of three over one year? Okay, it's three, but over three years it's one percent. So I haven't done the math, but it's not hard to see when you know how bad 2015 and 16 were that – you know, the pace, the long-term trend there is, is still pretty weak. And then we know where it's sort of, we know where the Bank of Canada thinks it's going on a forward basis. And I know where, you know, what we think. I mean, just keep in mind with the Canadian mortgage market being, you know, one that you reset or reprice mortgages on a five-year basis, or if you're floating, they reset any time the floating rate, you know, prime or whatever changes. For years now, that number, the five-year rate versus five years ago, so somebody who has a fixed-rate mortgage only cares about when they're up for refinancing, where is the five-year government bond and where's the mortgage rate versus when I you know, signed my original mortgage. And that rate had been going down and down and down. It's very stimulative. It allows people to pay more for houses or take more house than they might need or could afford at higher rates. But that number now, it's higher. The the five-year rate over the last five years is finally higher now today. Uh, and if you consider that, nearly half of all mortgages essentially reset in Canada every year. And people say, well, what do you mean by that? And I'm, there's a big chunk of say 25 to 30 percent of people that have floating rate mortgages so they reset automatically when rates go higher and then if you think of the rest of the five-year fix over five years you would assume one-fifth or so another one-fifth or so are refiing every year that gets you to about half in any given year and if those rates are moving higher that combined with the new regulations that that's likely to bite 